Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I know uh, it's been a long time since the last video that I uploaded on YouTube. So in case you're wondering what I have been up to for the last nine months or so, I've been taking the time to learn a new CAD software, uh, Fusion 360. I designed a um, CNC machine um, fully out of Fusion 360 and I'm building my second CNC machine right now. So just to give you guys a quick update on what I've been doing for the past nine months, I'll take a I'll show you a tour around my place and show you what I've done so far. Okay. Hey guys, so this is the first CNC machine that I built last year. It's a relatively small CNC machine um, built out of uh, mostly 3D printed parts, NEMA 17 motors, and uh, it has a 500 watt uh, brushless DC spindle right now. Okay. As you can see, this aluminum plate um, was used to cut one of the parts for my next CNC machine. The design of this CNC machine was originally by a gentleman, a young gentleman from uh, Poland. His name was Nikodem Bartnik. So I just took his design uh, from the internet, um, bought all the parts according to his bond list, and built according to his instructions on his YouTube channel. Um, it's a great um, first CNC machine for anyone who wants to dive into the world of CNC machining. And um, basically I use this machine to machine all the aluminum parts for the next CNC machine that I'm building. So in a while I'll show you um, the 3D CAD model just to give you guys uh, an idea of the CNC machine that I'm building. By the way, um, Nikodem Batnik CNC machine is actually called the Dremel CNC machine and um, after using that CNC machine, after using that CNC machine for a while, I qu quickly noticed there are a lot of limitations to that CNC machine. One of them is uh, the rigidity of the machine is very bad, and there's a lot of quite a bit of bad lash. So the parts that you machine is not that accurate. Um, Secondly, the z-axis travel is pretty limited. Um, essentially, I can only mill parts that are no more than 12 millimeters at most. So um, naturally, uh, you would want to have a more uh, capable machine. And in fact, Nikodem Batnik actually came up with uh, a much more improved version of the CNC machine and it's called the Indy Mill and I actually bought the instructions for this uh, CNC machine so after going through the, the manual and the design of the Indy Mill I also realized there are a lot of room for improvement so um, I decided to take it as a challenge to design my own CNC machine um, using Fusion 360 uh, because at the time I was also picking up the new software, new CAD software Fusion 360 and so let me show you in the CAD model what are some of the improvements and also um, changes that I did over the Indie Mill. So here's the DIY CNC um, that is based off of Nikodem Bartnik's Indie Mill. So let's take a look at the CAD model, shall we? All right, so in my version of the CNC machine, um, I wanted to change a few things, okay? The first one, if you notice, is of course, um, I use C beams, 40 by 80 millimeter C beams. Basically, the intention is to protect the ball screws and the nut from chips and dust much better. All right, and secondly, I use the 12 millimeter ball screws 
uh, throughout instead of 16 millimeters so that it can fit within the 40 by 80 C beam and uh, compared to the indie mill this one has a complete aluminum T bit for easy mounting of uh, the workpiece and also it's designed to fit in a machine vise I've also increased the, the Z travel, the Z travel uh, mainly because I want to fit the machine vise into the machine as well and as you can see here there's a snap-on design dust shoe which is designed to be easily snap on and off using magnets so you just have to press the lever here and you can remove it easily and from the indie mu um, I also noticed the lack of a uh, drag chain or cable chain for cable management so I, I've added that into this machine and of course uh, limit switches on all the axes for machine homing and this machine is also designed to mount a 1.5 kilowatt air code spindle right from the beginning so there is no need for adapter plates or anything like that there will also be a mist coolant system with an adjustable nozzle mainly for chip clearing uh, while machining metal like uh, aluminum brass and etc I have also added um, leveling feet okay so I can adjust the height of the machine and also level the machine uh, in case the platform or the table that it sits on is not level and of course with handles it will be easy to carry around and move around and another important thing that I need from this machine is of course it has to be housed inside a full enclosure um, to prevent the chips from flying all over the place and also to reduce the noise level of the machine while it's operating since I'll be putting this machine in the front yard of our house so basically these are all the changes and the improvements that I made compared to the Indimi for now the design of the enclosure is not final yet because I still need to see um, how the actual machine uh, turns out uh, by the time it's fully assembled before I work on the enclosure so I'll leave the enclosure at a later stage to finalize the design but um, let's zoom back into the CAD model if you notice you will see a lot of blue parts here Okay. There are basically three types of uh, parts to this machine. There are parts that I can just buy off the shelf, for example, like the aluminum profiles, um, ball screws, um, linear guide rails, stepper motors, spindle. And the second type of parts are the aluminum parts, which I will be machining out of eight millimeter aluminum flat plate using the Dremel CNC machine and the third kind of uh, part is actually the 3d printed parts in blue color so these are the parts that I am actually printing out of uh, blue PETG okay. so all the blue color parts will be 3d printed one of the reasons why I love Fusion 360 is because its CAD and CAM environment are all under one environment. <clears throat> Just to give you an example, um, here I have both my aluminum parts arranged in the CAM environment and uh, all the two paths are here. 
I can generate, um, I can simulate all the two paths. So everything is very seamless in Fusion 360. All right. Even for 3D printed parts, it's extremely easy. So for example, this part, since the design is already finished, all I have to do is just to go to Tools, click on Make, select the part, click OK, and it will just launch Prusa Slicer automatically and put the part inside the slicer. So everything is very seamless and easy. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to choose Fusion 360 to work on this uh, DIY CNC project. With the design complete, it's now time to send the files to the 3D printer and the G-code to the CNC machine to make the parts. So that means it's time for montage. So after many, many days of 3D printing and many weekends of machining, so this is what we have right now. Let me show you. Okay. So these are all the 3D printed PETG parts, which took about five to six days of uh, 3D printing on and off. These are clear PETG printed parts. So as you can see, this is clearly the mounting for the dust shoe. And these are the clamps and the hose adapter. And over here 
these are all the aluminum parts that is machined out of the Dremel CNC machine so after almost um, uh, two months three months of machining two months was lost due to the fact that uh, I actually burned my spindle while machining the, the parts and uh, I had to wait for the replacement for two months to arrive so so but finally we have all the parts we need right now and I actually broke two end mills in the process so yep that's part of uh, machining so now that we have all the mechanical parts ready so in the next video um, I'll be showing you guys the, the assembly process of the entire machine um, so stay tuned for the next video I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you like the video um, just click like and subscribe I'll see you in the next video Okay. Oh.